Hi everyone, this is my review of the Neopta S2 spotting scope. If you're anything like me, when it comes time to make a significant purchase, you find yourself on YouTube, checking out review videos, trying to become more informed. That's exactly where I started prior to purchasing my first high-end spotting scope. I want to talk a little bit about that decision-making process and how I selected the S2, but first, let's talk about its features. Starting at the front, there's a large 82 millimeter objective. This thing does a very good job of letting in a lot of light. Very important at dawn and dusk. The body features an integrated lens hood that is easily extended and retracted. This lens hood is going to do a good job of isolating that front lens element from the sun and reducing glare. Additionally, it's going to do a good job of isolating that front lens element and protecting it in the field. Moving rearward, there is a barrel focusing mechanism that in my opinion offers just the right amount of resistance for fine focusing. The eyepiece features an integrated eye cup that is easily extended and retracted. This is going to allow you to get just the precise placement you need for use with or without glasses. The zoom ring is at the center of the eyepiece and it is rather stiff. The only criticism I have with the S2 is the stiffness of the zoom ring. Where this can potentially be a problem would be in a scenario where Let's say I'm looking at something at 30 power and I decide I want to bump up the power so I can see it more clearly. If I don't lock in the tripod head or get a good hold of the body of the scope when I make that adjustment, I can potentially move the scope off of the target and then I'll have to reacquire it. So Miopta, make this thing a little bit easier to turn and you'll make an already great spotting scope even better. You have the choice of two different eyepieces. There's a 20 to 70 zoom and a 30 to 60 wide angle zoom. I've used both and they're both phenomenal. Personally, I found that the 30 to 60 worked better for me and that's what's in place on this scope. The eyepiece can be removed by pressing a button at the bottom of the scope body just below the eyepiece. Pressing it gives you a good tactile click and then rotate the eyepiece counterclockwise and with a little bit of a wiggle, come straight out. Putting it back in is a snug fit, but press straight down, rotate clockwise, and you get a good audible click indicating that it's locked into place. Moving forward, I can loosen the screw on the collar of the uh, spotting scope and this will allow me to rotate the body into a variety of positions. Inside the collar there are several detents that give you a fairly good click indicating where the scope is positioned and this will allow you to get precise and repeatable positioning of the scope body. Miopta did a very good job with the shoe on the scope. It actually comes pre-sized to fit into a variety of tripod heads. I'm not having to use an adapter plate with this head to get it to fit. And additionally, on my Manfrotto tripod, this will lock right into place without an adapter plate. If you do need an adapter plate, it comes pre-threaded and will allow you to put your plate of choice in place. The body is clad in a nice green rubber armor. This rubber is going to do a good job of isolating the body of the scope from environmental extremes. If you have ever used a metal bodied spotting scope, you know how well they can conduct the ambient temperature. So if it's cold outside, they're cold to the touch. If it's hot outside, they're hot to the touch. That's a non-issue with the S2. The armor does a very good job of controlling those environmental extremes and keeping the scope body comfortable to the touch. Additionally, it does a good job of dampening sound. If something were to strike the side of the scope, it's going to be much quieter with this rubber armor than if it were a metal bodied scope. And that can be very important in hunting applications. That's a general overview of the features of the body and eyepiece. But let's talk a little bit of how I decided to purchase the S2. I researched spotting scopes for approximately a month online, looking at a variety of YouTube videos, reading a lot of forum reviews uh, from Western hunters and from bird watchers, uh, two groups that value high-end spotting scopes. And at the end of those reviews, I come to the conclusion that the S2 offered the right combination of size, weight, and magnification range. Additionally, the Kawa 770 series of scopes offered the same features, and both are very highly regarded scopes. I contacted the manufacturers and was fortunate enough to get a copy of each in for testing. So over a two month period, I tested a straight eyepiece version of the S2 against the Kawa 773 spotting scope. And at the end of two months, I was really torn as to which one I liked best. They both had their pros and cons. One day I'd like the S2 better, the next day I'd like the Kawa better. Ultimately, I decided that I would let resolution 
be the determining factor. I knew that the S2 had better color and contrast than the Kala, but did it actually resolve better? I went online and printed out a series of resolution charts. I placed them at approximately 95 yards and they were inconclusive. Both scopes resolved everything that was on the chart. So what I ultimately did was create my own chart. All this is is a Word document with decreasing font sizes. In essence, I created an eye chart. And I'll post a copy of this at the end of the video so you can see it in greater detail. But what I found was that the Kawa and the Miyapta would both resolve the third line from bottom. But when you went down one line, only the S2 was able to resolve it. And that was with both scopes set on 60 power and this positioned approximately 95 yards away. So the Miyapta was resolving better than the Kawa. At the time, I still had the 20 to 70 eyepiece. I put it in place and found that with it, I could actually resolve the bottom line. So in the end, the S2 was resolving better than the Kawa, it had better color, and it had better contrast. So I let that be the determining factor as to which one I wanted, and ultimately, I purchased the S2. At the time of when I initially requested a copy, I got the straight eyepiece version thinking that I would like it better, but at the conclusion of my testing, I found that I actually prefer an angled eyepiece. And that may be a video for another day. I also tested the S2 against the Leupold Mark IV spotting scope. This is a great spotting scope. It's very compact and lightweight, but it's only a 14 or 12 or 14 to 40 power scope. So not in the same league as the Kawa. But what I did was set the S2 to 40 power set the Mark IV and the S2 up side by side on a bright sunny day and there was no comparison. The S2 blew the Mark IV out of the water. It truly is a premium spotting scope. So if you're looking for a scope that's going to allow you to see fine detail at distance, let you see hits on a still target at distance, let you see bullet holes at a target at distance, and is also built like a tank, then the S2 is going to do a very good job for you. I've been very happy with mine. It's served me well. I suspect it will continue to do so for many years to come. So if you get a chance, check out the Miopta S2 spotting scope. I think you'll find that it truly is a premium spotting scope and well worth your attention. Until next time, stay safe and have a good day.